بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وصدق امير المؤمنين سلام الله عليه We recall the khutbah 85 Imam Ali alayhi salam was talking about the perfection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and also plus counseling us as the followers of Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam and Muslims at large as well so the first part was about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how perfect Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. But in the second khutbah is counseling us. Where Imam Ali said, وَمِنْهَا فَاتَّعِذُوا عِبَادَ اللَّهِ بِالْعِبَرِ Ibad Allah is a term that is used even in the Quran. But it comes in two meanings. Sometimes it's used to mean everybody. Everyone, Muslim, Kafir, they call Abdullah. Because Allah created us for the purpose of Ibad. The purpose of us being in this planet is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So based on that, everybody, whether it's the stars, the moons, the galaxy, the animals, everything is called Abdullah. And that's what Allah, in one of the ayahs, He says, In kullu man fi samawati wal ard illa atir rahman abdu. Everything that exists in the heavens or earth, Allah said, all of them, with no exception, they will come to Allah with the title of servant of Allah. Everybody is servant of Allah. So that is the first. Then there is another word, that, and the same word is used in different contexts. To mean some chosen ones. Not for everybody. You go to the Quran. The word the same Abdul uh, Abid Allah used for certain individuals. Not for everybody. Example, you go to Surah Al-Fajr. It says, Ya ayyatuha nafsul mutma'inna irji'i ila rabbiki radiyatan mardiyya fadhuli fi mu'ibadi from others. It says, fadhuli. It says, enter among my servant. Now everybody is your servant. But here Allah is not talking everybody. He's talking about chosen servant. And that's why when you go to the Quran, even this title, Abad, is given to certain people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Isra, when he was talking about the Prophet Jani, Isra al-Mi'raj, look at how he described it. He says, Subhan al-Ladhi asra bi'abdihi laylam min al-Masjid al-Haram. Despite the fact, the Prophet has different names. One of his name in the Quran, Ar Rasul. One of his name is Taha. One of the name is Al Nabi. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not mention any but the name Abdi. So the word Abd is a special name that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses in some phrases. Imam Ali alayhi salam also in this khutbah, he uses in that term also. He says, Ya Ibadallah. And this Ibad Allah, he doesn't mean everybody. Because you can tell from the end of the khutbah that the word Ya Ibad Allah, 
He does not mean everybody. No, he's talking about those chosen servants. How? And then he said to them, he said, Al-Ittaad in Arabic, it comes from the word mawa'ava. Al-Wa'ad means to take a lesson from something, admonition from something. It's called al mawa'ava. So Imam Ali says, فَاتَّعِذُوا إِبَادَ اللَّهِ بِالْعِبَرِ النَّوَابِ Which means, Imam Ali says, O oh, you, the creatures or the servant of Allah, take a lesson. Take a lesson. From where? As a from useful items of instructions. Whenever instruction comes, Allah tells you to do something, or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells you not to do something, Always take a lesson from it. You know, in Islam, there are so many lessons. And Imam Ali said in one of the khutbah also, he said, Ma akhtaru la'ibar wa aqallul mu'tabirin. He said, what a lot of lessons is out there, but very few of people take the lessons and make use of it. But there's many of them. Now, when you go to the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how many stories he tells us in the Quran? Uncountable. There is even a surah in the Quran called Surah Al Qasas, where the surah is nothing but the stories. Now, all of these stories, Quran tells you, says, Allah says, The stories that we tell you is for the purpose of lesson. You learn from it, you take something out of it, so you will benefit yourself in the future. That is what these lessons are. So Imam Ali alayhi salam said, when those lessons come out on your way, and he says, take the useful ones. Doesn't matter where it comes from. As long as it's more ever. Sometimes, al ibra can come from a fasa. That's when we have hadith, he says, he says, خُذُ الْحِكْمَةَ وَلَوْ مِنَ الْفَاجِرِ خُذُ الْحِكْمَةَ وَلَوْ مِنَ الْفَاسَ Take a wisdom, even if it comes from a corrupted person. As long as it's hikmah and it's useful and beneficial, take it and use it in the right way in your life. So Imam Ali tells us, anytime in your life, sometimes you're passing by, somebody says something, you see something, it's a lesson for you. Take it, apply it in your life. Sometimes this lesson can come from your child. A stand he takes, something he does, and it becomes a lesson. You take it and you apply it in your life. Sometimes your co-worker at the place of work, something happens, somebody says something, you see something, it's really a lesson. You take it, you apply it. It doesn't have to be only from the Quran. No, no. Anytime a lesson comes out of your way, you take it and apply it. That's what Imam Ali is telling us. He said, If I ta'idhu ibad Allah bil ibar nawafa wa a'tabiru al-a'tibar Imam Ali alayhi salam, he says also, وَعْتَبِرُوا بِالْآلَاءِ الْمَوَافِ And also, as well as, he's telling us to take a lesson from useful items of instruction, he says also, and shining indications that comes in your way. Sometimes lessons comes in our way in different ways. Sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends certain people in your life to teach you a lesson. But sometimes we don't know that. Sometimes we don't take these lessons. Sometimes, Allahu Akbar, an animal can come in your life to be a lesson for you. Now you go to the Quran, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about Habil and Kabil, two individuals. After Habil killed, uh, Kabil killed his brother Habil, what happened? Allah said, Allah said, and we said, what? Uh, to come and do what? To teach him. How to bury the cup of his brother. Allah didn't send him being on. Animal. An animal they came and they did exactly what Allah sent them to do. Well, they were teachers of human beings. Kabil learned from this crow how to bury his own brother. Sometimes animals can be a lesson in your life. Sometimes certain people who are lower than you, you look at them, no, this guy is nothing. But they become a lesson for you, a teacher in one way or another. 
Sometimes Allah sends these signals in our lives. Sometimes, no, Allah sends the signal in your dream. So you can see things. So you can take it as a lesson. So you can apply it. All of these are lessons from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imam Ali alayhi salam, he says, all of these, when it comes in your life, take them and make use of them. And Imam Ali alayhi salam, he said also, he said, was that you will be nothering and bawaya get also benefit from preachings and admonitions. When somebody preached, just take something from them. Learn something. And this applies to majalis that we come in. This comes to Juma prayer that we come in. This applies to any majlis that I go. Because here, sometimes we have to understand these places that we come, majlis, Juma, unfortunately, sometimes it becomes like social gathering. I'm coming to the center so I can socialize with somebody. I haven't seen my friends the whole week, so I'm going to go there so I can smile, they can smile, get some nice food, and that's it. But that's def that defeats the purpose. When we come to these places, imagine this, the Jeshi, our own goal should be, I want to take something home. No, no. The whole hour that I sit in front of the alim, listen to the lecture, I have to take something home. If I don't, then tell, trust me, that is a waste of your time. That hour that you spend under the majlis or under minbar, if you don't take anything, trust me, you have to answer Allah for spending that an hour for that time. Every, every minute of your life is counted by Allah. It's valuable. I come to Jumu'ah prayer. It's not like, no, I come and do Jumu'ah and that's, no, no. I have to take something out of it. And this also put the responsibility on the speaker too. And that speaker also even have more responsibility than the audience. Because I as a speaker, when I go on the member or I sit to give a talk, if I'm going to talk five minutes, five minutes talk, that's five minutes to 10 people. It's not a five minutes. It's more than that. Because you're not taking five minutes and that's it. You're taking five minutes from each one of these 10 people. If you multiply that, how much is it? Huh? So it's not five minutes that you're talking. It's five minutes that you take. You have five minutes to talk, but you're taking five, 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 five. You multiply all those people. It's not a five minutes. And you have to give something back that is useful for their time. And that is why you see Imam Zain al Abidin, when he was in the castle of Yazid and he was asking to go on the member and give a talk, he said, Allow me to sit on this podium to give a talk. Which the talk? Which talk? The talk that pleases Allah, the first and the most, until the audience also get benefit and tawab from Allah for listening. They learn something, and then they get tawab for their time that they sit in the majlis. To the responsibility to both sides, the speaker and the audience, that before I, I have to take something. And that's what Imam Ali said. I said, you have to learn something and take something with you in the majlis that you go. And then Imam Ali alayhi salam he says, وَانْتَفِعُوا بِالذِّكْرِ وَانْتَفِعُوا بِالذِّكْرِ وَالْمَوَعِدِ Make use of mawa'ida, word of admonition, reminder. Make use of it. You know why? Because all of this thing is temporary. It's really temporary. The Prophet was told in the Quran, فَذَكِّرْ إِنَّمَا أَنْتَ مُذَكِّرْ Ya Rasulullah, remind them, your job is a reminder. But whether we take that reminder or we don't, at some point, we're going to see that we have lost something. You go to the Quran, Quran tells you, people, the Prophet was reminding them constantly, constantly, and they refused to listen. What do they say? قَالُوا رَبَّنَا قَالُوا رَبِّ ارْجِعُونِي قَالَ رَبِّ ارْجِعُونِي لَعَلِّي أَعْمَلْ صَالِحًا Later on, they were the one who regretted. They want Allah to send them back to this world. And Allah told them, no. 
because we give you chances to listen. We give you reminders and reminder and reminder, and you fail to take those reminders. And there is no chance to, uh, after this. The Imam Ali alayhi salam continued. He says also, he says, فَكَعَنَّ قَدَ أَلَّقْتُكُمْ مَخَالِبُ الْمَنِيَّةِ وَانْقَتَعَتْ مِنْكُمْ عَلَىٰ إِقَلْ أَمْنِيَّةِ Imam Ali alayhi salam, he said, it is as the claws of death are passed in you. That whatever life we have is not permanent. There is time for it. And Imam Ali alayhi salam, he continued to remind us about the day of judgment. That the day of judgment, we all will be full to what is called Ard al Mahshar, Sa'iq. Every one of us, Yom al Qiyamah, Wajaat Kullu Nafsin Ma'aha Sa'iqon, watch it be. Every human being. A Sa'iq in Arabic is called driver. And the Imam Ali and the Quran also use it that Yom al Qiyamah, every human being will come with his driver. There is an angel that are assigned to every one of us. They're going to drive you to Ard al Mahshar. Where you have to go, you have no choice. Have you seen when we land in a, in America or any other country? As you go through immigration, there are securities. They make you sure that you go through the security. Right? They match you. They make sure that you don't take any route <coughs> until you go through immigration. If you have the right papers, then you get it. If not, it's on your back. But there are people who are watching and make sure that you don't take any other route. You go direct to the place you're supposed to go. Allah is telling us the same thing you are And they say, not just sa'iq, wa shaheed. Shaheed is the witness for our amal, what we have done, what we do, what we did in this world, they will bear witness. And not just one, not two, there are many of them. That is what Imam Ali is telling us. In the khutbah, he says also, he says, wa siyaqa ila al-wird al-mawrood, فَكُلُّ نَفْسٍ مَعَهَا سَائِقٌ Every soul has a driver who is shaheed and the person who will be witness. And that witness can be angels. Those, and those witness can be an imam, can be anything. But they all have it. Now the moral of the hadith that Dr. Imam Ali is telling us is to two things. Number one is to always keep your eyes open in your life. Anytime something lesson comes, take that lesson and apply it in your life. Because it's an opportunity that might not come in your life. Number two, remember also there is a day called Yawm al Qiyamah where there will be witnesses for every movement that you do in your life. That's what the khutbah of Imam Ali is telling us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to listen to those teachers of Ahlul Bayt and make the best of use of it, inshaAllah. Walhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad.